outstanding intermediate accounting, financial ratios, and liquidity. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. And a very good source is the Keystone Wygant Tech, published by Wiley.com. And here is their website. I want to talk about uh, using financial data because sometimes we get TMI, too much information. We're overwhelmed with the amount of paperwork we get, and we really don't know how to use it. We don't know what's useful and what's not. This is particularly true for non-finance professionals. A friend of mine was the CFO of an engineering company, and he was able to put together a, a group of meaningful financial reports for non-financial people to use. And a third thing to think about is, if you have to give an elevator speech, that is, if you had to tell somebody in two or three minutes what's going on financially with the company, how could you do it? Well. What we need to do is we need to address trends using financial data. And the way that we do that is through financial ratios. We're going to talk about all four groups in our videos. And I'm going to uh, group them, segregate them this way. Liquidity means your checkbook. Do you have enough cash coming in to pay your liabilities? You have a positive balance in the checkbook. That's what the liquidity ratio is referred to. Activity. How do you use your assets productively? If you have a vehicle, are you using it to make money, to make deliveries? If you're, if you're a plumber, are you using the plumbing truck enough hours each day where it makes sense because you're producing revenue and covering the cost of that vehicle? How do you use your assets productively as activity? Profitability is obvious. Are you making money? And then the last one is coverage. And that means, are you generating enough profits to cover your debt and repay specifically principal and interest? I've now gone over to uh, an example in Excel, the Levi Jeans Company. And these are the financial statements as of November 30th, 2009. You can see that we have a balance sheet with assets, liabilities, and equity on the left. We have an income statement for the month of November on the right. And what I'm going to do is use this to explain liquidity ratios. I've put the ratios at the bottom of the page here, and I put think checkbook. Again, this is looking at the checkbook, seeing cash that's coming in the door, and whether you can pay down current liabilities with those assets. So the easiest one first is current ratio, current assets divided by current liabilities. So if I were to highlight this cell, <coughs> excuse me, you would see that we took current assets of 175,000, cash accounts receivable and inventory, divided it by current liabilities of 95,000, which is our accounts payable, bills we have laying around, accrued payroll, we owe employees for payroll, and the current per portion of long-term debt which is principal payments, repayment of principal we have to make over the next year, which is how we define current. Current is less than or equal to a year. So that's how we get the first ratio. I'd like to remind you also that current means assets that are cash or something that's going to be converted to cash within a year. And I always try to point out that the things that suck up your cash, the reason that you don't have as much cash as you think is, it's going one of two places. It's an accounts receivable, which means you've sold something and haven't collected the money yet. Or it's an inventory, which means if you're Levi's, there's um, denim and partially sewn jeans and completed jeans that are pack packed up on your warehouse floor, your manufacturing floor. And that's where your cash is tied up. So you need to convert your accounts receivable and inventory into cash. The second ratio says, well, what if we take out those, um, those assets that are less marketable, that is, that are less, we're less able to convert into cash. So instead of having current assets in the numerator, let's have cash, marketable securities, which I define down here as, 
securities where there's a market to sell, you can easily get a price quote, like common stocks or bonds, something that's easily sellable. Let's include that in our numerator. And then we'll use net receivables, and by net receivables I mean net of bad debt expense. So we're only going to include our receivables that we know are collectible. So if a company owes us $5,000 and they're bankrupt, we would not include that in net receivables. So we're going to divide that by the current liabilities. If I click on that cell, you'll see that we took cash, accounts receivable, but we excluded inventory. And we divided that by current liability. We exclude inventory because typically we're going to collect cash in 60 to 90 days where our inventory might not be sold for six months or a year. So for the second calculation, quick ratio, acid test ratio, we're going to exclude inventory. We call it the quick or acid test ratio because it's a more accurate calculation of how much cash do I really have coming in the door in the short term? And the answer is a lot of it will not be from inventory. That's why we say right here that the asset section of the, of the quick or asset test ratio excludes inventory because inventory is harder to sell quickly. The last ratio we saw in intermediate accounting seven, which is the current cash debt coverage ratio. This takes a term from cash flow analysis, net cash from operating activities. In other words, the cash you get from spending money manufacturing goods, the cash that you get in the door from selling products and services. So the day-to-day -day operations of your business, the cash inflows and outflows, let's add up the net cash inflow and let's divide that by average current liabilities. And I'll say again that average current liabilities means the beginning of the year balance plus the end of the year balance divided by two. So you can go back to intermediate accounting seven and pick up where we left off with that current cash debt coverage ratio. And what we're answering in this question is based on the bills that we have in the drawer for accounts payable, accrued payroll, the current portion of long-term debt, can we cover those current liabilities with the cash from operating our business day to day? So in other words, we don't have to do anything unusual with cash. We don't have to worry about cash from investing or cash from financing to pay our ordinary liabilities. If I have to start selling investments and raise cash that way to pay my current liabilities, that's a problem. If I have to finance or issue stock to get cash to pay my current liabilities, that's also a problem. So we want to think about it strictly from cash that we need from operating activities, cash that we earn from operating activities. We want to ignore investing and financing cash. If we have to be doing those things, we're not generating enough cash. So here's our liquidity ratios thing checkbook. Here are the three bullet points of the ones that we covered. That's the end of part eight. You'll find my YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. Here's my Facebook address if you'd like to copy and paste it and communicate with me. For live tutoring one-on-one, -on -one, you can go to meeting.com. You can contact me through my website, my email address, and my phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.